Well hello there and welcome to my workshop. This video has been prompted by this little fella, Rubin, who is now 12 weeks old and uh, what this video is about is manufacturing uh, gates and fencing to enclose this area of yard here because um, due to my wife's recent uh, illness she can't go running off uh, after a pup because we have chickens and ducks and geese and all manner of birds just roaming around free so to keep them out of this area and to keep the pup in from running after them um, I've decided to, to sort of enclose the area with uh, gates and uh, fencing so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm putting a jig together because the gate and paneling or fence paneling is all relatively the same relatively the same size so I'm putting a jig together that's a meter square and uh, so all I have to do is cut the the parts lay them inside here uh, then I know it's perfectly square and then just pin them and screw them all up together Some of you may be wondering why there's no sound on and I'm playing music in the background. Well the simple reason is it's um, 32 degrees outside and it's about 29 degrees inside. I've got an air conditioner going and I've also got two 36 inch pedestal fans whirring away and it sounds like a twin engine Cessna about to take off so you wouldn't hear anything anyway uh, I do actually leave a segment in for about 30 seconds so you can hear the the sound in my workshop on a hot day what I'm doing here is I'm measuring out uh, exactly a meter and I'm going to put a stop block and I screw it directly to the bench um, you know it's the easiest method to uh, to do this type of job when you you, you cut in multiple uh, pieces of wood at different thicknesses but the same length so you just put a stop block stop block uh, on the end of your bench and then um, you'll see how easy it is you don't have to measure and actually in fact, what I do do is I cut the first one measure it up to make sure that I am right and I've got the stop block in the right place and then uh, you know you're clear to cut all your parts then and it's just a simple matter then of uh, assembling everything the material I'm using here is a material called Merbu now this is hardwood similar to teak that's grown in northern Queensland and uh, you know it's very very hard and uh, very very well wearing you don't have to treat it with anything you know it's a you know it's a very very good wood to use external uh, the bugs don't get into it at all A lot of you are asking me where I actually get my music from. Well, Google and YouTube supply all 95% oh, of my music. Uh, I do use uh, local artist uh, Con O'Neill, uh, his music as well in some of my videos. And um, well, generally people like it, I think. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, laying in now the cross uh, sections and uh, everything gets connected to these and so I'm just laying these out measuring them up and I actually mark on the jig then where these go so I only have to measure this once and you'll see there I am marking it now exactly where they go and it makes the job much easier and it makes it go very fast so what I'm doing now is laying the first one on and I'm using 45 millimeter brads actually 
I think that oh, they're 16 gauge brads um, but I you know I don't rely solely on these to manufacture it now this is a strip that I'm cutting to lay between so I get a an accurate uh, spacing then between the palings uh, this is a gate actually and um, it saves you measuring you just put it in between and it makes the job go very quickly and it's very accurate so I'm putting two brads at each point where the paling you know meets the the bracing at the back and now I'm drilling a, a single hole a countersunk hole in between those brads uh, in each position this makes for a very strong and stable uh, gate or fence panel this is uh, something else I've always done I've learned to do over the years actually that uh, you know you drill all your holes and then you put a screw in each hole and then you screw the, screw them all in rather than get a screw put it in the you know the end of the, the 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 driver and then put it in this actually goes a lot quicker uh, it's just a bit of a slowed up screw putting in I suppose <laughs> thought you might like to see that and the way that the driver actually drives it it sort of you know sort of does it incrementally What I'm actually trying to do here as well is, is show you the process of well, mass production, I suppose, of um, gates, fencing, it, you know, it could be anything. Really, it's simple to make a jig and cut all your parts, then assemble all your parts and then, you know, sort of attach them all together, whether it's screw, brad, whatever you choose to use. And there you are, a perfect uh, gate or fence. Um, panel. So now what I've done is I've I wanted it uh, slightly longer for the posts because I wanted them proud. So this is um, Tasmanian pine. I've slowed this footage up. Now this is a Black and Decker radial arm saw cutting through pine. Now that blade's doing about 2200 RPM and it's a, well, a 12 inch blade, something like that, and it's not burning the wood at all. It's a very thin blade, it's only um, I think um, 2.5 millimeter cut it does, and uh, that blade is years old and it still cuts like new. Oh, this is the um, the, the uh, die that I'm using. Is this uh, cedar? I understand. Yes, I think it is cedar. And uh, it's just a simple process with a with a rag to, to rub it on, uh, rather than use a brush. I find our know, brush is a little bit messy, and this is a much quicker job. What I'm actually doing through the process of this video too is is showing you. You know, sort of all the sort of tips and tricks that you can do to do a fairly simple job, really. But it even makes that job very much easier. And of course, further on in this video, um, you know, I, I, I show you the full the full job of uh, actually putting this in situ as well, and making the fence and putting the gates in. Another good idea too is to paint all your brackets prior to actually fitting them. Um, now I thought I actually made painted enough brackets here, but uh, I quickly ran out and uh, I went and bought some more. And you'll see that um, eventually, you know, I, I'll have to paint them um, afterwards. But uh, 
you know, this is ten times easier if you paint them first rather than trying to paint them when you've already assembled the fence. But there you go. So now the process of assembly in situ. So you know you start off with um, anchoring the the support posts. Uh, you know in this case for the gate. Uh, so you need this perfectly true, perfectly upright and square. Because if you don't get this right, the whole job goes wrong and the gate won't shut properly and it'll you know drag on the concrete or, or something like that or even you know in rain when the wood swells a bit it'll start catching so you, you've got to take all this into account and there's little Rubin So I'm actually dyna-bolting these into the concrete. So I'm just sort of setting the post up roughly square and then you know, drilling the hole for the dyna-bolt. And um, I, it still gives me that small amount of um, movement before I sort of tighten it up uh, you know, to get the, the post totally square. So. Now this is a fairly simple process, but uh, this concrete was pretty hard actually, and I did in a couple of places hit a couple of pieces of Rio, which uh, made it real hard to get through. Is a dyna bolt. I can't stipulate this enough when you're doing this type of job. You, m you must be very accurate and square otherwise you know you're virtually throwing your money away and you don't want to be doing that so it's best to get it right first time Now even though I've got the front one partially screwed on, I'm checking the back uh, plate then and repositioning to make sure that uh, when it's done up, you know, when you've got the screws done up, uh, that it does pull square. That's another thing, as you're doing the screws up, it, the, it will move, so you've got to be sure that uh, it moves in the right area. <laughs>
And of course, this is Rubin inspecting the job so far. Now this is an interesting tool. This is a, an original Black & Decker workmate. I brought this out to Australia with me when I came out 33 years ago. And uh, I've still got it and I still use it. And I can't find anything better than it on the market. It's very portable. And it's very, very handy. And it stands up over the years. So if you can get hold of a second hand one, because I don't think they make them now. If you can get hold of a, a second hand one, I, my advice would be buy it, because they're extremely handy. So what I'm making here is tie-in blocks or connection blocks from the pillar then, or the gate post, um, to the, the, the wall. Uh, so I actually attach the, the gate post to the wall uh, to make it very, very solid. Um, because those gates, uh, you know, that, that uh, Mabu wood, um, it's, look, it's very much like Jarrah, it's very heavy. And uh, I think that gate probably weighed uh, probably a good 15 kilos. So when you got that swinging out on the end of a <laughs> post, just hanging onto it from the bottom of the post, uh, you know, probably not a good idea. So I tie both sides into the wall as well. So I made this block a very, very good fit fairly tight fit in there so what i do is i offer it in there and put it in the post with one screw then use a uh, a punch to mark the block behind so then there's no mistake that's where the hole's going to be and uh, drill it through and put a raw plug in what's used to be called a raw plug it's just a like a, a plastic uh, affair it gets tapped in and then I use just ordinary wood screws to, to go in here you can see it's a fairly good fit you need a good fit too because it stops any any movement and connect it to the wall So I hope, uh, you know, all these uh, little tips and tricks that you see me doing here, and I'll point out as many as I can, um, you know, as the video goes on. But, uh, you know, it might help someone out, out there to uh, do a similar job themselves. As, you know, it's much better to, if you can do something like this yourself, rather than try and, you know, it's going to cost you three, four, five times as much to get someone in to do it. Because, of course, all this is custom made. Yeah, you can actually see me wearing my Indiana Jones hat, too. I don't often wear a, a full hat. But uh, the sun in Tasmania is vicious. <laughs> because the air is so clean down here, uh, the sun doesn't have anything, you know... The, anything to hold it up there's no pollution in the air to uh, filter out the UV and uh, it's absolutely vicious so um, me not having much fur on top um, I have to wear a hat outside otherwise uh, it roasts the top of my head and I think what I'm doing here is pretty self-explanatory you know putting the latch on it's, just, it's a simple gate latch you just need to get it parallel and square and uh, you know it's a very easy job to put one on
Now this is one of the panels then, one of the fence panels. It's identical to the gate. Um, you know, there wasn't much diff it wasn't much point in me making a you know purpose size, so you know I had a area to bridge and uh so I made it identical to the uh to the gate and it works quite well I think. So the house is uh Western Red Cedar panelling and behind the Western Red Cedar is oak. Uh, so I picked up on one of the um, palings in the... not palings, what am I talking about? One of the inner wall supports. Uh, now that is, I think it's 90 by 45 uh, solid oak. Uh, you know, the, the whole house is made with oak. So it's good and strong and uh, I know there's no wiring running uh, right at that area next to it that box that's a, a sub electrical uh, box but I know exactly where the wiring runs from there uh, and it doesn't run past this area so I'm fairly safe to screw into the the oak uh, on the in interior of that wall the support Why I mention this, it's a fairly dangerous thing to do just to go drilling or screwing into the side wall of any building, really. Uh, especially one that's um, got power running interior of the wall. And you have to know exactly where the cabling is uh, because you may not get an electrical shock. But later on down the track, if you screwed into a cable... Um, you know, you could start a blooming fire and burn your house down, so it is, you know, you've got to really know what you're doing to do this type of thing. Now, I know exactly where the wiring is because I've had these panels off and I've replaced several of these panels, uh, these outer uh, clad in then, uh, so I know exactly where the wiring is. You can probably also recognize now how much of an easier job it is to paint your brackets first uh, before you, you know, you sort of screw them on. Because you can probably imagine the problem you'd have, or I'd have, trying to paint the brackets with it already screwed onto the, the house and the fence. Out my 
Now the music playing in the background is one of Con O'Neill's tracks. Now, anybody's interested uh, in hearing more of his music or uh, even purchasing uh, one of his tracks uh, below this video in the um, the description uh, I'll leave uh, all the information uh, required to go to his uh, website and uh, you can pu purchase direct from him you can see on the floor I've got a chalk line uh, you know and I'm laying the fence uh, accurately along that chalk line um, the, the actual concrete here dips away from the house. I think the fall from the house to the, the guttering is about two inches. So I'm actually following that down too. Um, so I'm, I'm putting some, I'm not sure it's quarter inch or three eight. I think it's three eight actually shims uh, underneath the gate because you know you need clearance under the gate to open and close it. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here is lining the gate up on the gate post and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory I think what I'm doing. Well, there's the finished job, and I hope you've enjoyed watching the process, and I hope I've transferred some a little bit of knowledge of how to carry out um, the you know the manufacturing process and some of the tips and tricks of uh, using jigs and making jigs and um, assembling such a a project as a, a gate and a a fence in well fairly uh, awkward circumstances really because you know like the you know the walls aren't level and 
what have you but uh, it's a fairly easy process to uh, to do so thank you for watching and please come and watch one of my other videos on CNC routing or CNC milling or laser work and wood turning so thank you for joining me today and it's uh, bye for now